Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this latest teaching session in the course on technology and the future of medicine. Yan Lian is going to take us through biomaterials and regeneration of meniscus defects. Take it away, Yan. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. My presentation is about the biomaterials in the generation of meniscus defects. So let's go to the background information. So osteoarthritis, um, the meniscus injury is a major risk factor for uh, osteoarthritis. About 10% of Canadian elders have uh, OA, and this uh, demographic is expected to increase, increase to 20% by 2031 as the population ages. And each year, the healthcare cost for the OA is in excess of uh, $4.4 billion. So this is a simple anatomy of the meniscus. So uh, it's a pair of uh, semilunar fibrocartridges structures between the femoral condyles and the tibial uh, plateau. It can, it can be divided into medial uh, meniscus and the lateral meniscus. The, main fun the primary functions of the meniscus is the low transmission. It can decrease the stress uh, placed on the uh, articular cartilage, so it can uh, prevent the, the articular cartilage from damage. Also, it can stabilize the joint and uh, provide uh, lubrication, so absorption, or nutrition for the knee joint. So once the meniscus uh, tissues is lost or uh, the meniscus is injured, it will lead to the development of the osteoarthritis. It may progress into the involvement of the surface cartilage and the surrounding bones, tissues, or synovid uh, fluid. So let's look at the um, uh, uh, reparat reparative capacity of the meniscus. It has a uh, uniform of uh, blood supply. Usually the blood vessels will penetrate into the 10 or 30% of the meniscus, and this region is called the restroom. And for the uh, red and white zone, there's only limited blood supply. Uh, this is the inner part of the meniscus. There's usually there's no uh, blood supply. The nourishment uh, are usually from the synovial fluid or the mechanical motions. So the lack of uh, blood supply to the inner region of the meniscus is the primary cause of the non-healing properties to the meniscus. Usually there are six types of meniscus tears uh, based on the different morphology. Uh, we can see here this number one is the uh, longitudinal meniscus tears and this is the bucket handle meniscus tears. And this one is the horizontal menis meniscus tears. This one is the radial, and this one is the abrique, and this is the complex uh, meniscus tears. Usually, the um, reparative capacity of the meniscus is limited to the uh, vascularized uh, areas in the outer one foot of the tissue. Injuries in, uh, localized in the uh, vascular inner two foot portion uh, do not, uh, usually do not repair. Today, there are usually two uh, surgical options for the meniscus injury. One is the totally meniscectomy. Uh, in the past, the meniscus is described as the functionalist uh, laminates of the intraarticular uh, lab muscles. So um, this opened totally menis meniscectomy was considered a uh, standard approach for most of the 20th century. Usually patients can obtain uh, excellent certain results of the meniscectomy, including return to the hard work sports in a few months. Um, in the 1960s, as the, uh, the arthroscopy meniscectomy has been improved to uh, cause less damage to the uh, meniscus with the development of the surgical equipment or the techniques. The main advance 
uh, of this partial meniscectomy is that they can preserve the peripheral lint of the meniscus that is responsible for the biochemical uh, functions of the knee joint. But uh, the long-term effects of both these two uh, uh, surgical options will lead to the further joint degenerations and uh, uh, osteoarthritis, especially the meniscectomy. So people realize that the meniscectomy is not a harmless procedure, so efforts uh, should be made to preserve the meniscus as much as possible to avoid different uh, complications. The generations of a bioengineered meniscus replacement would be an ideal treatment for the meniscus injury, such as using the functional meniscus substitute. Now, there are only two types of um, artific artificial meniscus in the clinical practice. One is the collagen meniscus implant. This type of uh, artificial meniscus is composed uh, of the Taiwan collagen derived from the bovine Archegis uh, tendons. Usually, it's enriched with the glycans, uh, which they, they can uh, stimulate the cellular engrowth once implanted into the defense of the meniscus. Uh, before the uses, the, this kind of uh, uh, artificial meniscus should be chemically or physically uh, processed to remove the uh, molecular antigens or the non collagen materials. Uh, the, uh, the, the shape is similar to the human meniscus, but during the uh, operations, you can cut the, this kind of implants into different shapes according to the uh, types of uh, meniscus injury. So this is the procedure of the uh, CNI. Usually it's used for the partial meniscectomy with the preservation of the, these uh, peripheral portions so that these implants can be sutured to the meniscus stumps under the arthroscopy. Uh, now, in this uh, six to, uh, five to six to six year feasibility study for the collagen meniscus implants. They, uh, they insert the CNI into the uh, lesions and then this uh, implant is being sutured into the place using an inside out technique. This allows uh, points to the interface between the native uh, meniscus uh, laminates and, uh, and this implant. After six months the, um, under the arthroscopy, we can see that the newly generated cells uh, is filled the defense almost completely. And there's also some blood vessels called uh, synovial panels that covers the new tissues, which can provide uh, uh, blood supplies to the tissues. Um, for the same patients, after uh, at six point uh, three years, we can see that the defects remains completely filled with the, this new tissues, and these uh, chondral surface uh, are unchanged since the six months we look. The interface here between the this is the native tissue, this is the uh, new generated meniscus tissues is very distinguishable. As for the histology results, we can see from that most of the uh, collagen, collagen meniscus implants has been resorbed or assimilated into the new matrix after one year. These arrows uh, points to the dark staining structures that are the uh, laminates of the collagen meniscus implants. But these types of uh, artificial meniscus have some sorties. First, it's, uh, it has a mix of disease transmission and immunological responses. And the uh, integrity of 
uh, this implants uh, will change this under the wet conditions. Uh, it will increase the risk of the this kind of scaffold damage during the implantation and uh, make it more difficult to suture. Uh, the degradation rate assessments in dogs have been shown to uh, be too rapid to ensure the sufficient time to allow for the formation of new meniscus uh, tissues. So now there is a uh, new uh, artificial meniscus uh, coming out. It's called, it's a uh, normal biodegradable and synthetic auxiliary uh, scaffolds composed of the aliphatic polyurethane. And this kind of artificial uh, meniscus has uh, porous and spongy structures which can promote the engrowth of the cells or the uh, deposition of the extracellular matrix. Procedure to uh, implant uh, this kind of artificial meniscus is similar to the implantation of the CMI. So it can also be uh, sutured to the uh, limay meniscus. And then the first proof of the principle studied in uh, patients was conducted in 2011. In these studies, we can also uh, observe the 100% of the meniscus defects and the successful uh, integrations of the implant with the native uh, meniscus. But the most important findings in these studies is the uh, uh, three layers of the newly uh, regenerated tissues, which resembles the native uh, meniscus. Uh, this is the layer one of the newly uh, new generated uh, tissues. The, we can see that the CD34 uh, immunohistochemistry showing that the presence of the vessels uh, sprouts in the layer one is uh, a characteristic of the neoangiogenesis. Uh, These uh, young vessels are located towards the center, and the older one um, and the fixed wall vessels are located toward and in the fibrous capsules. This is a strong indication for the uh, vessel in growth, and hence for the tissue uh, in growth taking places in the artificial meniscus. And this is the layer two. We can uh, see that there is a uh, uh, deposition of a loose uh, extracellular matrix, the mixed uh, fibroblast cells and uh, uh, fibrochondral blast cells are also uh, can can be also uh, observed. And this is the layer three. We can also observe the uh, control brassolite cells here in the uh, layer three. We can see that the layer one resembles to the uh, peripheral red vascularized uh, regions, typical rich in the meniscal cells of the fibroblastolite cells, and it's rich in the Taiwan collagens. And the layer two resemble the middle uh, red white regions of the native uh, meniscus, which also containing a mixture of this type of uh, cells. And layer three resembles the white and inner uh, regions, which is characterized by its uh, a vascular reality. So. For now, this is the uh, first clinical study to report a engrowth of a tissue uh, with a structured organizations for uh, after the implantation of a synthetic scaffold for the partially meniscectomy. These cell-free uh, implants are only applied in the patients with uh, very selective uh, standards. Usually, are uh, irreparable the irreparable partial meniscus injury, and um, none of these now none of these studies have currently demonstrated regeneration of a functional or long-lasting meniscus tissues. For the future directions, we uh, from these studies we can uh, see the successful tissue in growth or biocompatibility uh, in this. Uh, in the clinical use, 
um, our knowledge about the municipal uh, tissue engineering is also being significantly improved. So uh, we we also need uh, the data on the mid or long term effects of the CNI or the uh, oxidative feed uh, on the articular cartilage to prevent the osteoarthritis after the losses of meniscal tissues. And also the amount or the quality of the newly formed tissues also need to be improved because from the uh, histological uh, assessments, we can see that there's uh, different levels of scar formations and uh, vascularizations or the ECN uh, deposition. Thank you. <laughs> so this is an area where um, we, we're trying to generate very complex organs and sometimes something as simple as this I think is very, very useful as a model because if, if you just look at things like uh, liver, kidney and so on, they're so incredibly complicated. I, I find this beautifully uh, simplistic and I think it's actually kind of ahead of those other areas, just like, you know, uh, trachea and, you know, esophagus, uh, bladder, all those things are, are currently more in the practical realm of being just about ready, uh, where, whereas a lot of things are very exciting to think about, but are not so close to being <laughs> just about ready. So I think it's, it's kind of nice uh, from that point of view. Are there questions? Is there any data on the long-term immunogenicity of a CMI? You mean the long effects of? Yeah, does it stimulate an immune response in the long term or short term? For the, for the CMI, it's it's first used in is in the uh, once in the 1992. So, uh, sorry, no, not the CMI. The um, the completely acellular one. Completely synthetic. One? Yeah. yeah. So that, does it stimulate uh, uh, immune responses? Yes, if you if you if you, uh, if you have the immuno, immunological response, sure. It because uh, some there's a paper report that there's a uh, synovid uh, the the information of the synovids after the implantations of the CNI, but uh, not not that many reports about this kind this kind of uh, immunological response. Uh, so I had a question on, in your uh, experience with the meniscus injuries, what, what would you say is the most common cause of the injuries? Yes, uh, it depends on different uh, people, for the, uh, but the most common reasons for the injury is uh, during sports, such as skinning, football, or basketball. Um, and then I had another question on, so is it as a direct result of meniscus injury that people develop osteoarthritis? When people injure their meniscus, as a result of that injury, osteoarthritis happens? Or, like, I'm, I, I'm just confused on the relationship between the meniscus injury no, and... No, once the meniscus is injured, it will change the environment of the knee joint. And the, I mean, the load transmissions and the structures will, uh, will change. Um, but if, if the people receive the meniscectomy uh, without the implantation of the artificial meniscus, the knee, the knee joint will, the contact areas of the art, articular cartilage will increase and will lead to the damage of the surface uh, articular cartilage. So can you tell us what you yourself are working on? You, you gave a general presentation, but you're also 
working in this area, right? What are you Actually, doing? Actually, my, my research is about the uh, stem cells, uh, the stem cell based uh, generation of the meniscus. Right. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this kind of studies uh, hasn't been uh, used in the clinical practice. Yeah. So it, are the um, existing technologies quite similar to what you're working on with the uh, stem cell generated meniscus? Or is the stem cell generated meniscus going to change everything completely? Certainly there are some differences between, between what I did and the, uh, and the current used methods. Mm. But now research are, uh, for the stem cell studies, the research researchers are mainly focus on now uh, focus on the cell cell based uh, the combinations of the cells and the scaffolds to generate a uh, uh, a meniscus like tissues that have the similar uh, biomechanical uh, properties right. or the, I mean the, uh, the chemical depositions similar to the uh, native meniscus. Yeah, so I think that, that it's sort of similar to in the kidney, there's considerable overlap in the technologies between xeno, transplant stem cell generated organs and the bio um, engineered kidney. And, and I think you're saying the same thing, that with the stem cell generated meniscus, you can use some of these existing uh, scaffolds. And, and so you, that research is, you know, assisted by the research people are doing on the completely synthetic one and the um, uh, bovine one, right? They, they're all related areas of research. They're, they're not entirely separate. People, people are, are trying to combine the, this existing uh, artificial meniscus, the scaffolds with stem cells, but most of them are uh, for the animal studies. And the results are promising, but it's still far from optimal mm -hmm. for the 